Hello, my name is Sydney. Contrary to popular belief, I actually had a lot of fun applying to medical school. Spending the money part, not so much. But I would say a big part of how I went through that process unscathed was staying organized. I did so by breaking the tasks into manageable bits, setting schedules of when I would work on what, when, and color coding the heck out of an Excel since I'm a big advocate of that. In today's video, I'm going to share the master medical school Excel I used to create my medical school list and keep track of primaries, secondaries, letter of recommendations, interview invites, and everything basically associated with applying to medical school. Quick disclaimer, some of these stats and school requirements that I mentioned throughout this video are based off of either a quick Google search or a brief MSAR skim. So please do research on your end just to make sure that that is the correct criteria. I just also would like to say I am by no means the perfect applicant. A lot of classifications of whether I fell into a school's range were solely based on my predictions so please use my example or any of my opinions as just a mere guideline on how you can get started as always timestamps of each specific section as well as my master medical school excel will be listed in the description below without any further ado let's begin the primary application the primary application opens May 4th of 2020, so may the 4th be with you. The primary application consists of identifying information, schools attended, biographic information, coursework, standardized tests, medical schools, work and activities, letters of recommendations, as well as your personal statement. I'll make a separate video about the primary application since it is a monster in itself. I want to refer to my master Excel to note on the primaries tab, I have and this isn't perfect, but this is just one way you can organize your Excel. In case you were thinking about using the system in terms of program information, I have in the columns, I have the schools, the states that the schools are in, the category that I made an educated guess. Is that school out of state friendly? I listed a percentage for some of these schools. It may be inaccurate based off of a rough Google search. I also listed the median MCAT as well as the undergraduate GPA. And I listed the rankings of research and primary care, whether the school was a public or private school and any notes I had about that school. So for example, I made an indication about the UC Prime program since that's something I was very interested in. I also made a note of which schools were tuition free or going towards the direction of debt free. And I just did a little indication if I knew someone that either applied, got an interview, matriculated or graduated from that specific school. AMCA's letter of recommendation. I actually made a video recently about how to make the letter writing process for your letter writers easier. So I'll link it somewhere. I compiled the AMCA's letter of recommendation information through 2019's MSAR as well as Google searches of each school's specific requirements. I would double check if you are trying to use what I googled before as a basis of how many letters and what type of letters each program accepts. In terms of timeline, you can submit your letter of recommendations after you submit your primary applications, so don't let that hold you back from submitting your primaries, but schools must receive your letter of recommendations before or they review your secondary application. In terms of where can I send my letters? Where can I store them? I personally chose to use Interfolio. Once you make your account, it is a free dossier. Dossier, doss how do you say this word? Dossier? I always say it trolly. Dossier. Dossier. It is free to store your letters, but when it comes time to send out those letters, you do have to pay to upgrade your account to have those sending letter privileges. How it goes is you will create an account on Interfolio if you do choose to use that site. Input your letter writer's names. Interfolio will send them an email saying, hey, you can use this link to upload your letter. Once your writers have uploaded their letter, you'll get that notification and then that will be stored on your dossier. When it comes time to submit your letters, you will link your AMC letter ID with your Interfolio account just so Interfolio knows to send it directly to your AMCA's account. You will indicate on your application the medical schools you're applying to and that will forward them to those medical schools. And you could check if everything is sent swimmingly when you do log into your secondary application site. See on the status page the letter that you submitted from AMCA's store there. In terms of my master Excel, on the letter of recommendations tab in columns, I have the school name,
name, the number of letters that that school will take. The lowest number is three, upwards to seven for certain programs. I do have AMCA's letter information of the type of letters that that school will accept. I have a column called to attach. Once I kind of went through each program's requirements, I made a note of, okay, I want a letter by this person, this person, that person, that person. On my original sheet, I actually have the name of the letter writer, so it isn't just a list of numbers and the status. Once I got that confirmation from my secondary application page that they have received my letters, I would write complete in that box. The secondary application. I'm just gonna jump right into my master Excel reference. After I submitted my primaries, the main mode of communication that schools let me know that they were interested in taking my money. Just kidding. Actually, not really. Was they emailed me. They emailed saying like, yeah, you're invited to submit a secondary. Here's a link to access. Once I had that link and created my account, I inputted all the information into the secondary tab. I specifically have two, one called secondaries and the other called secondary game plan. The secondaries tab, I split it in columns based on school, the application status. So once I submitted my secondary, they would send another email just to confirm that they received and my secondary application was considered complete. I also included the link to accessing that secondary for each school. The next column, I put my username as well as the passwords. Majority of them, I was able to use the same password, but some other places had nuances where you had to do special characters or different capitalizations. I also did a column entered into secondary plan, question mark, just as my mental marker that I inputted the secondary due date and prompts into the Excel. So it was very easily accessible. I also have a box of my Casper username and password, as well as my Casper exam date and the date that it was graded. On the next tab called secondary game plan, this is kind of where I made a note of priority uses based on how much I wanted to go to that school. So if I really wanted to, it was high priority and I most likely was going to tackle that secondary first. I also have a column for school name, the date I received the secondary, the completion difficulty that I considered that secondary to be, depending on how extensive what I would rank it. On the next column listed out each prompt as well as the word counts an informal deadline. I set that date to two weeks after I received my secondary application as well as the actual deadline that that secondary was due. The last column I have submitted. So after I got everything said and done, I just put yay, submitted. Interviews. I went to four interviews. Of those four, I received one waitlist decision and three acceptances. I did receive an offer from one of my top programs. So after getting that, there are only a handful of schools that I would travel to if I did receive an interview invite. Spoiler alert, I did not receive any interview invites from the program. So my interview season officially ended December of 2019. On the interviews tab, I did include descriptions of my experience from the four programs that I got to interview at. And those schools were... I don't know these full names of these schools. The University of South Florida Morsani College of Medicine, Western Michigan Homer Stryker School of Medicine, Keck School of Medicine of UCS, Keck School of Medicine of U Keck School of Medicine of the University of South. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Keck School of Medicine of the University of Southern California, as well as University of California, San Diego School of Medicine. Looking at my master Excel, I have the name of the school, when my interview was scheduled, the mission statement of the school, the interview style. So for example, USF was a traditional one-on-one -on -one with a faculty member. Western Michigan was a mix of traditional as well as, they called it structured, but it was kind of just of the MMI. Keck was was two traditional interviews and UCSD was MMI. The location details, so just a link to how to prepare, how to get to that interview, whether I reviewed that secondary to refresh myself, and some notes of the program. So that consists of my experience of the interviews I attended as well as some speculations as to why I might have received rejections and some miscellaneous information. Just as some examples for that, some notables. I got a rejection from Baylor. In general, Texas schools are not as out-of-state friendly. Their public and private school tuition is very inexpensive. I've applied to that program anyways and I went to the private route, but one of my close friends actually goes to that school. He is an MSTP, so he's getting his MD, PhD there. He has amazing stats, <laughs> higher stats than I do. 
lot of extensive research experience which is maybe one of the reasons why I didn't get an interview. Some other things I noted was if a school was probably research focused and I didn't really fit in with that school's mission. So that concludes everything I wanted to cover in terms of staying organized throughout the application process. In terms of the specifics of each component of the AMCAS application, I am planning to make a video focused solely on the primaries, secondaries, as well as your interviews. Off the top of my head, I do want to make videos on the personal statement as well as the work and activities section and on secondary essays. If you have any questions or different videos that I didn't mention that you'd like to see, please leave it in the comments below. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!